Hello, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about what Java actually is. So Java is a powerful general purpose programming language. It's very widely used. It's been around quite a long time now and it will be around for a long time into the future. So it's a really great language to learn as your first programming language or as your only programming language because people certainly do make careers entirely out of Java. And whatever kind of program you want to write, there's a good chance that you can write it in Java. Uh, just for fun, I googled something like programs written in Java and I found this Reddit page. What are some of the biggest and well-known, well-known, well-known Java applications used in this in the world? And you can see just from me scrolling through this that there are an awful lot of things written in Java and it covers an awful lot of different areas. Uh, so what is a programming language in general? Well, basically programming languages can be div divided into two types, interpreted and compiled. Uh, in both cases, you write text files in your programming language. So Java is a language in a way, in the, in the same sort of way that English or Greek or Italian are languages. Um, that is, you can write down Java, you can write down text in the Java programming language in any kind of text editor. You know, it's just some text. Then to get that to run on your computer, you need some other step has to happen in order to actually run that text as a computer program. So with interpreted programming languages, uh, what happens is your text gets fed to a thing called an interpreter, which is just a computer program. And that actually does whatever the text tells it to do. Now, Java is not interpreted. It's a compiled programming language. That means that we take our text and we use some software to turn it into an actual binary computer program, which can then run and actually do things on your computer. So quite often in this course, I might mention compiling or building. Compiling means taking your Java text and turning it into binary files, which are actual computer programs that your computer can understand. Building means uh, taking all the different binary files that you've created and building them or combining them into a single computer program. So um, I, I might I tend to use these terms a little bit interchangeably, compiling and building, although they do mean different things. Don't worry about memorizing this at the moment. All I'm trying to do is uh, reduce your confusion, not increase it. So I just want to run some of these ideas past you so that you've got a bit of an idea about what's going on here. So basically we, we write Java programs as some text and we compile them and build them into a program. And usually that's more or less as simple as clicking a button after we've written the actual text. Most of what we're doing is just going to be writing that text in the Java programming language. If you want to create a particular type of program with Java, so let's say you want to create Android programs or you want to create uh, websites or web applications or um, games maybe even, you can create games in Java. Uh, whatever you want to do, first you would have to learn basically the Java programming language. And then later on, you could learn how to use Java to do the particular type of thing that you want to do. So if you wanted to create websites, first you've got to learn Java, and then you'd have to learn about creating websites with Java. There may be other things that you have to learn. So in the case of websites, you'd have to learn more about web programming generally. But basically that's the idea. This course teaches you the Java programming language uh, so we'll be creating mostly text mode programs, which might not sound very exciting, but the thing is you'll be learning the Java language itself, and that will give you a very, very powerful sort of platform from which to then go and learn particular areas of Java that may interest you. Um, many people build careers just entirely out of Java. So uh, beginners often think that they've got to learn 15 different programming lang languages, but you really don't. Uh, lots of people just know basically one programming language like a, like Java or C++ or something and they just stick to that programming language and they build a whole career out of it. So although 
Um, in this course, I'm not going to teach you how to create Android apps or desktop apps. We may touch on some specific things you can do with Java, and I may show you some basic little examples to get you start started. But we're not actually going to be um, looking at any particular speciality. We are going to be looking at the Java programming language itself, writing text mode or console mo mode programs, we call them. But even so, you, you're going to be learning a very, very valuable skill here. And it's hopefully going to set you on a whole journey and enable you to do whatever you want to do with computer programming. Okay, so until next time, happy coding. Hello, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how Java works. And once again, uh, don't stress, there's no need to really memorize this, but you, you will gradually become familiar with these ideas, I think, as you continue to use Java. So um, I've already said that Java is a compiled programming language. We take text files written in the Java language, we turn them into binary files, and that's called compilation. We combine them together if there's multiple files. This is called building. And then uh, we run them on a computer as a computer program. Uh, but actually, uh, it's a little bit even more interesting than that because Java does something rather interesting that many programming languages don't exactly do. And that is, there's this thing called the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. And what this does is, is it's some software that creates effectively kind of like a simulated computer on your computer. And your Java program runs on that simulated computer. Now I'm simplifying a bit. Um, various optimizations mean that Java doesn't precisely run like that. Bits of Java code um, run kind of almost directly on your computer. But basically, uh, to simplify a bit, it's as though your Java programs are running on a simulated virtual computer, which runs on your computer. And that simulated computer is created by the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment. Now, the advantage of this is that Java is a compile once, run anywhere programming language. So with some computer languages like C++, you compile your, your source code, the code that you've actually written, and then um, it will only run on one particular type of computer. If you want to run it on a different type of computer, you have to recompile it, and maybe you even have to change it a bit to run on a different type of computer. The idea behind Java is that you compile it once, and that will run on any kind of computer that's running a Java runtime environment. So the Java runtime environment gives the Java program a kind of consistent environment to run in regardless of the underlying type of computer. So this is a very clever idea. So if you want to run a Java computer, a Java program on your computer, then you need to have a JRE installed. We won't need to specifically install this because later on, we're going to install a Java development kit. The Java development kit includes a JRE, a Java runtime environment, so you can run programs once, it's, once this is installed but also it, it allows you to develop Java programs yourself. And all of these things are free, completely free. Um, so uh, we're, we're gonna move on to, be, to install a Java development kit, among other things, because we'll also need uh, something to write our Java code in. Okay, uh, that's it for this video. Until next time, happy coding. Hello. To get started with pr writing Java programs, you're going to need two things. You're going to need um, the Java software that actually creates your programs, and you're going to need some sort of editor to work in. So in this video, we're going to take a look at installing the software that actually will take the text files that you're going to write in the Java programming language and turn them into actual Java programs. And what you need is the Java Standard Edition, that's SE, uh, Software Development Kit, SDK. So I'm going to search for Java SE SDK Download. In this course, we're using 
uh, version 11 of the development kit, at least to start with. So if I click on this link here that says Java SE Development Kit 11, then we go to the Oracle Downloads page. On this page, um, you have to be sure to check Accept License ag Agreement, and then you need to download the correct installer for your platform. So I'm actually using Mac, so I, I would download this OSX uh, version. Um, I'd use the 64-bit version. So if you're using Windows, download the Windows.exe installer and you've got options for Linux as well. So you need to download that and install it. You probably won't encounter any problems as long as you have admin rights on your computer. If you do encounter any strange error message, messages or anything like that, don't be afraid to type the error message out uh, into Google or into some search engine. Uh, just Google the error message basically and find out what comes up um, because other people will have had the same problems. But basically you shouldn't, you shouldn't really encounter any problems most of the time. Uh, so you just need to install um, the latest version of Java. If there's a later version out by the time you're watching this, so um, version 12 is actually already out. And the reason I'm not planning to start off using that is because there are relatively minor changes in version 12 of Java compared to version 11. Uh, and um, it's not always the case that all the software you use will be compatible with the absolute latest version. So it's often not a bad idea to hang back a little bit from upgrading your version of Java because otherwise you may run into incompatibility issues. So I'm following the policy here in this course of using a fairly recent version at the actual time that I'm making this video. So if you're watching this and version 14 is out or whatever, you can use version 14. But I'm going to stick with Java 11 at the moment, even though version 12 is already out. Okay, so try to install that, get that installed, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at installing Eclipse, which is a integrated development environment. So hopefully by now you've installed the Java SDK um, and what you need is some kind of editor to work in because uh, Java programming is basically about creating text files and in those text files instead of writing in a human language for example like English you write in the Java programming language and then the software development kit that you've already installed will behind the scenes turn those into actual Java programs. Now, you can write Java code in any kind of text editor, even in sort of Windows Notepad or um, Mac text editor, whatever you like. But there is specialized software designed to make it easy to work with Java code. So one option would be one good option, for example, would be to use a an editor that's actually designed for programmers to work with, like a, a programmer's editor. And at the moment, I'm, I'm here at the end of 2019, um, Visual Studio Code is actually a great option, uh, but we, we won't be using it in this course, and I, I will explain why. But if you search for Visual Studio Code, so this, this is not Visual Studio. Um, Visual Studio is a is a what we call an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. Um, but we're not going to be using that either, although I think you can. So if you search for Visual Studio Code, uh, you'll, you'll find that there's a, this is actually a, an open source programmer's editor from Microsoft. Uh, and it, it's, it's really, really good. It's really excellent. I highly recommend it. And you can install all kinds of plugins in it that make it work with various languages, including Java. Now, the problem with using a, a code editor to do your programming is that you've still got to somehow compile your programs. That is, you've got to take the text that you write 
and turn it into an actual piece of software and then actually run it. So one thing that um, probably a fair few Java programmers actually do is they will use a programmer's text editor like Visual Studio Code, like Emacs, or even Vim, uh, something like this. And then they'll, on the command line, they'll actually compile and run their programs. I'm not going to be um, using the command line in this course, I don't think. And the reason for that is that I'm using a Mac and you may be using Windows or Linux or a Mac. I don't know. Uh, and the actual sort of command line commands that you would need to write in a console to compile your Java programs would be slightly different between different operating systems. And I want to make this course in a way that it's good for anyone using any operating system within reason. And another reason that I'm not going to be using the command line is that most professional Java, ed Java programmers do actually use a thing called an IDE. Now IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And that's a fancy way of saying um, a text editor that's specialized for usually for a particular programming language. And it will also have buttons to do things like compile your programs. In other words, take, take the text and turn it into a program, an actual piece of software, and run the programs so that we don't have to mess around with the command line at all. And the one that we are going to use in this tutorial is a very excellent, very popular, completely free IDE called Eclipse. So I'm going to ask you to search for uh, Eclipse for Java developers, because that's what, what we will be using. Um, Eclipse, you can use it to write code in various programming languages. And of course, we want the one that's specifically configured to develop Java programs. So if you search for the Eclipse IDE for Java developers and go to that at eclipse.org and then download the one for your operating system. I can see here it says uh, a newer version of this is available is available here. So I'll just click on that link, get the latest version of it. You really want the absolute latest uh, in this case and uh, download the version for your operating system and install that. Uh, and then all you have to do is, is start it up. Um, sometimes people find that there are error messages when Eclipse starts. Uh, Eclipse does depend on you already having installed the Java SDK. So you have to do that first. Um, if you've done that and then you install Eclipse and you get an error message, again, don't be afraid to put that error message into Google. So if it says, you know, no matter how ob obscure it is, if it says something like cannot find Java, then in type into Google Eclipse cannot find Java or whatever the error message says and see what the solution to it is. This, this initial few steps are, is, are particularly frustrating or they can be. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, but some people are going to find that this doesn't go smoothly. And at that stage, it's really easy to just give up and say, I, I don't know what's going on here. It's too confusing. It's normal to feel confused at this stage, especially if you do encounter an error message, but you just have to get through this particular bit. And once we've got to the point where we can actually run, run Eclipse, write a program and run the program, and that's all working, then we'll have a lot smoother journey. So it's just this initial bit that's a bit tricky. So after you've installed Eclipse, start it up and you should see something that looks like this. And Eclipse usually starts up with, um, with a screen that looks similar to this. When Eclipse starts, it might ask you to set your workspace directory. And what that is, it's just a folder where Eclipse is going to put your code. So you can create that folder in advance if you like. Uh, put it in your, your documents folder or whatever. Call it workspace, call it anything you like. It doesn't matter. And then you have to just tell Eclipse to put your code in that folder. So in other words, you set your Eclipse workspace to that folder. And if you change your mind later, um, in one of the menus here, in the file menu, there's this option to switch workspace. 
and you can use that option to switch to a different folder. By default, it will be called Workspace, but it doesn't have to be. That's, that's not important at all. So you can set that to wherever you like. Because I'm on a Mac here, um, my uh, directory structure looks like this. It starts with a slash. On Windows, it will probably look a little different, but that, does, that doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so hopefully you can get to this point where you can see Eclipse running. And then we don't need this, um, we don't need this whole screen here. So I'm, I'm just going to close it with the sort of cross in the corner here. Or ho however you close windows on your system. And then we'll see something that looks like this. Quite intimidating, but as you'll see, um, it's not so bad. We're going to learn it bit by bit. And by the end of this course, you'll feel, I think, fairly familiar with using Eclipse. Eclipse has an absolute ton of features and you can even install more via plugins, but we won't need most of those features. Uh, so there's no need to be frightened of it. Um, it is a bit intimidating when it starts up, but you'll see it's, it's not so bad. Okay, in the next video, we will look at actually creating a Java program. And until then, happy coding.